Hey there, welcome to CKLU 96.7. This is another edition of Crater Conversations. This week we are interviewing a few guests from Furet, uh, Pride Sudbury. Uh, so they are Michelle Gauthier as well as Hez. Uh, they are part of the board of directors for the organization. Um, and if you didn't know, Pride Week is coming up right around the corner. So we've got a, quite a few actually events, big events coming up soon. So we've got Northern Lights Festival coming up. Uh, I think the countdown now is 10 days. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, I don't know what you're waiting for because you've only got 10 days left. Uh, so Northern Lights Festival Boreal, that's coming up July 5th through the 9th. Uh, we've also got then the following week, start, or 5th through the 8th, sorry, for Northern Lights Festival Boreal. Starting right the next day on the 9th is Pride Week here in Sudbury. Uh, so st- extending the whole week, there's so many different events going on. Uh, there's gonna, they're going to be doing a takeover of Memorial Park. Uh, they're going to be doing uh, also, obviously, a Pride March. There's going to be a Pride Prom. There's going to be uh, the Big Gay Cabaret at Ziggs is a really fun show that's going to be happening. So lots of fun stuff to get into. So this week, uh, our guests from Pride are going to fill us in on what you can expect for this year's festival. On this week's edition of Crater Conversations, we have two special guests with us today. We have Michelle Gauthier and Hez, both from Fierte Sudbury Pride. Uh, so they're here to talk to us all about Pride Week that we have coming up in the middle of July. Um, so first off, could you maybe give us uh, a, a basics about the mission statement of Fierte Pri- Sudbury Pride and some of the dates for the Pride Festival? Uh, gladly. Uh, just as every pride, and this is just, you know, off the top of my head, we're a not-for-profit uh, volunteer-based organization. Um, and we really pride ourselves and strive um, to support, educate, advocate uh, when we can, and celebrate the queer community in the city of Greater Sudbury. Mm-hmm. And this year, uh, Pride Week is from the 9th of July to the 15th. From the 15th of July. So jam-packed that whole week full of events oh, and yes. fun stuff. Fun stuff. Um, so now when we're talking about Pride um, and Pride events, there's often, uh, you'll see it attached to it, a lot of these really long acronyms that people... LGBTQI2A. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it can be very intimidating for somebody who's new to the community, who's maybe still learning, they're not really sure what's appropriate. So can you explain to us some of these acronyms and what exactly they mean? Yeah, it actually... It just started out with LGB, lesbian, gay, bisexual, Um, and then over the years, more uh, more identities were added onto it, so that we weren't leaving people out and making trying to help be more inclusive. So we've got LGB, lesbian, gay, bisexual, T, transgender, Q, queer. 2S, Two-Spirit, which is Indigenous, and I, which is Intersex, and A, which is Asexual. And there are more letters, and I apologize for anyone's identities that I might be leaving out, but those are those are the ones that I'm that are most commonly used. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, you can fit in anywhere in that spectrum, just that, uh, you know, it's important to make sure everyone feels like yeah, they're identified, exactly. right? And they actually um, updated the Pride flag this year to include the black and brown stripe so that it's inclusive to people of color as well. So we're trying to like get that image out as well. So oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know about that. Our, our pride logo has a color splash and it has all the colors of the new updated pride flag. In wow. it. Yeah. So in the, today's climate, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who feel that, you know, of course these people are accepted. Why, why do we need pride anymore? So what in you, I, that's definitely a very loaded statement to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would you guys say to people like that? Why, why is pride so important? Do you want to go first? Um, there is a difference between community integration uh, and tolerance. And uh, we are well on our way. We're doing very well. Um, but I think there's still a lot of work to do. And we need to keep the subject at the forefront. And yes, we do eventually, in the big scheme of things, want to be, you know, no labels. Everybody just live the way they live, love how they love. And And that's okay. You are who you are and your identity is your own. Um, But until that day, uh, until everyone has the same rights and everything is inclusive, we still need to keep that subject matter at the front. Mm -hmm. Uh, And celebration is part of that, really. Mm -hmm. That was well said. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the history of Pride is, is 
fighting for rights, right? It's It started as a riot and it became over the years a celebration of the rights that we have acquired. But yeah, there's there's definitely still right. Like this year, it was really awesome um, that they've now added, uh, you can have a X gender selection on your birth certificate, which is an amazing step. Um, but, and also, um, in Ontario, at least the sex ed education includes LGBTQIA2 <laughs> information. However, with the new government, there is some fear that that might be cut. So there, there still are some, some things we need to fight for, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the, the battle's never won, really. Um, I mean, we have seen even actually in the last couple of weeks, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, the, the new Heritage Minutes. Yeah. There's a new Heritage Minutes. Is, uh, I'm not, I, I wish I knew the name of who, who they were honoring in that video, but, yes, um, you know, like, they, no, nice, nice steps, right? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a good time. Absolutely. Um, so uh, as far as Pride Week events, who is invited and welcome to participate in Pride? Everyone who supports Queer people. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, everyone who is accepting and open and wishes to participate or observe or learn, uh, anyone who comes with an open mind is welcome. And I'm proud to say that we have quite a beautiful uh, array, uh, which hopefully uh, piques everyone's interests, really, from all the age groups. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, now, there's lots of events going on through the weeks uh, or throughout the week of Pride Week. Um, so what are some of the highlights that you guys are looking forward to participating in? Uh, well, um, highlights for me. Oh my God, there's so many to choose from. I was so excited when I was looking at the you were talking about the sexy salsa. Yes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I love a to dance. Sexy salsa there's class. Sex. Yes. Zoe, uh, who's a good friend of mine, is offering a uh, sexy salsa class Whoa. on the Monday evening. What a way to start the week, right? Yeah. yeah so oh, much saucy fun. Monday evening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'd have to say another one of my favorites is the Big Gay Cabaret. Mm -hmm. uh, I just love the performance. It's really, mm. really fun. Um, and on Saturday, I am looking forward to uh, first, it's the family yoga being offered the first thing in the morning, which is really nice for the young families, something for them to be able to participate in. Uh, yeah, I mean, there were so many of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, uh, the band Pony, um, had, uh, Sean Cosmo, uh, is going to be coming down. Uh, on Wednesday to do the Rainbow Rock Show, which is an all-ages show. I'm super stoked about that because I love that band. And there's also Camp Girls and Ghost Cat playing. I haven't heard them, but I'm really excited. It's going to be a fun night. Um, yeah, um, also really stoked about uh, the... I'm not, I can't actually go to it because I'm not a youth, but I'm, I think this is an amazing event. It's a youth clothing swap. So it's going to be like all like different kinds of clothes and makeup and hair and stuff. And it gives kids a chance to like try on different things and like just experiment with gender expression or like, and then walk away with some free clothes. I'm, yeah. I'm going to volunteer there. I'm really excited about that yeah, one too. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Since you can't participate. Yeah, exactly. I'll just volunteer. <laughs> I'll volunteer. I'll donate some clothes. Oh, and I'm also really excited about the sewing, Sew with Pride at Sew Local Stitch Lounge. They're going to be teaching us how to make a skirt or a flag or a banner or a cape, something that we can bring with us to the march. Mm -hmm. So, and it's pretty cheap. It's 29 bucks and that covers all of your materials and the lessons. And so, the lesson. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So uh, obviously with all the Pride Week events, it's kind of all leading up to the Saturday is the big day. That is the big mm -hmm. Pride March. That's the Pride Day in the park. Yes. Um, so Pride March. So that's going to start at 2 p.m. So what's the route? How long, how many, like how, what's the distance? Oh, that's a good question. Very good question. Same route as last year. Um, and oh my goodness. I know it starts at the Memorial Park. <laughs> it's <starts>, okay. <laughs> it starts at Minto, then we go on up towards Durham Street. Okay, yeah. Um, and we take our way down Durham. But a walk that's not too strenuous if you wanted to bring your family, if you wanted, if you had little oh, ones yeah. with you. I know it's less than an hour. Okay, oh, yeah. So right. it's a, yeah. Yeah, so it's some, a short... definitely something that almost that really anyone could participate in. That's true. And other people who I've been just actually contacted today, people wanted to know what the route was. And um, because they're going to pick a station and just watch because they're not able to walk in the march. But they can mm -hmm. still, you know what, we still need supporters. We absolutely need people to cheer mm -hmm. us on. 
Yeah. So we love to see, you know, signs and waving hands and all that as we're marching by, too. Absolutely. And we're going to have the roller derby people there, like, uh, being our marshals to make sure oh. that we all, you know, stay in. Formation. So they'll be, like, roller, rolling around. Yeah, right. <laughs> Policing things. Yeah, exactly. Right. And they do some tricks. I saw them last Oh, yeah. They're, they're super fun. They're fun. Yeah. yeah. They have a game that night, too, after the march. So, oh, so yeah, hopefully we can get some Ruffle people. up some folks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what is, if you guys participate in the pride march here before last year yeah. so yeah. what's the environment like participating in it i thought it was super fun it was my first year in sudbury last year mm-hmm. so this is my second year so last year i wasn't involved in the pride committee but I, I went to pride and it was super fun and i was like this is cool i want to i want to be part of this so that's why i got involved this year yeah. i have to say um that well, the first time i experienced it, it's been a couple of years now the first time I experienced uh, the Sudbury uh, Pride March, I was just overwhelmed with how fun and loving and accepting and everybody, you know, the energy is just captivating. You just, it carries you away. It's really, really fun. It's a, it's a great feeling uh, to be able to celebrate in that way. So a big part of the Pride March is, of course, all the signs, the decorations, the outfits, the fanfare. Um, so what are, uh, are, are there any opportunities for people at the Pride Festival to uh, get themselves geared up for the, for oh, the March? Yes. Oh, yes. Actually, yes. Um, one event we have uh, is to prepare for the March. It's on Thursday in partnership with Santa Santé Communautaire with Mits and Mirrors. And show your colors or affiche toi. It's a sign making workshop. Um, and has maybe you want to talk about the messaging for that? Oh yeah. So we wanted to make this year's March, you know, not to take away from the celebration because we all love to celebrate, but we wanted to get more of that activism part into it as well, and not forget that there are things that we're still fighting for. So one of our like. Uh, our focus is, is not to lose the sex education we have here in Ontario because right now it's really great and we're all a little bit worried that it might disappear soon. So yeah, that's we're hoping to get that message out. So we've we've partnered with Santa Santé and Miss and Mirrors and yeah, hopefully to make a bunch of different signs that people can bring to the march so that as as well as their bright, colorful, awesome outfits, we also have signs that are you know, asking for what we want, the change that we want to see, and, and the stuff we want to keep that is actually awesome. Awesome. So any listeners that are tuned in right now, uh, if there may be informa- looking for more information about Fierte Sudbury Pride, where about more events, or just about the organization in general, where can they find you guys? Uh, the website is sudburypride.com, and uh, we also have an email. You can feel free to email us at sudburypride at gmail.com. Perfect. All right, we're going to cut to some music, and then we'll be back in a few minutes to talk more about Pride. Hey, welcome back to CKLU 96.7. So I hope you enjoyed listening to the first half of our interview with Michelle and Hez from Fiorete Sudbury Pride. Um, so we're really excited to hear about all the different things that they have going on. And as well, uh, they were really uh, helpful in giving us some information if you're maybe not part of the community, maybe you're still learning, um, what kind of things you can participate in, what kind of things you can expect. Um, so really helpful. Um, and of course, just remember that every Everyone is welcome to participate in Pride, if, as long as you have an open mind, as long as you're accepting of everyone that's there and expressing themselves, then you are totally welcome to participate in Pride. Um, so as well, a few other events we've got coming up around town. We've got Northern Lights Festival coming up very, 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 very soon. Uh, that's coming up July 5th through the 8th. Uh, we also have, uh, remember, there's going to be uh, late night shows uh, for each of those after, uh, to the townhouse as well, and uh, I believe there's few at a few other locations like the refinery and alibi room so definitely check those out um there's also uh, Canada Day coming up this long weekend, and it's supposed to be a hot one. So if you're not going to be at camp, uh, maybe you would like to be in the air-conditioned comfort of the Sudbury Arena for their annual festival of foods for uh, their international cuisine festival. So there's going to be lots of different stuff to check out for Canada Day. There's always Bell, uh, always uh, Science North as well. Uh, if you're looking for something to do with the family, uh, whatever you're doing, though, uh, make sure you're safe. Don't drink and drive. Uh, make sure that 
that you have a plan, if you're going to be indulging, that you know how you're going to be getting home. Um, and if you're not really sure, if you don't have a, if you don't aren't able to secure a ride, something happens, these things, they come up. Remember, there's always driver's seat. So driver's seat operates similar to uh, Red Nose. Um, or a safe ride home was now called safe ride home. Um, so essentially they will drive you in your vehicle home. So, uh, this one isn't free. This one is uh, sort of like an Uber. So you pay charge through with your phone, but definitely a great option. If you find yourself stuck for a ride and need to get home safely and responsibly. Um, so we're going to go into a lineup of music here. So this is going to be some of the performers that you can look forward to hearing over the weekend and over pride week. So that is July 9th through the 15th. Um, so on the uh, one night, we're going to have uh, <clears throat> Rainbow Rock. That is going to have the bands Pony, Camp Girls, and Ghost Cat. So we're going to play songs from both of those. So there's Small Things by Pony, Elusive Camp, Elusive by Camp Girls, and Wall by Ghost Cat. There's also a performance later on in the week as well by Baby Brother. Uh, so we're going to play a song by him, Hard Way. So let's head right into that. Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. All right, so that was it for our first segment of music there. Uh, so we had a few artists that you can check out over Pride Week. So that is coming up June, uh, sorry, July 9th to the 15th. So that was Small Things by Pony, Elusive by Camp Girls. We accidentally got a little extra tune in there from them as well. Uh, Wall by Ghost Cat. And then the last one there was Hard Way by Baby Brother. Um, so these are shows that you can check out during the week of Pride. Uh, check out Fierte Sudbury Pride if you're looking for more details on when you can get these events or where these events are, tickets, whatnot. Uh, there's going to be lots of stuff happening throughout the week for sure. Um, so we are going to talk now with more about uh, some of the events that are going on throughout the week. Um, and it's, of course, as well, what you can expect from your experience participating in Pride events. Um, so there's lots to take in, so let's get right to it. So we're back again with uh, Michelle Goche and Hez from Threat Fierte. Fierte. Sudbury <laughs> Pride. Wow, if you've never listened to this show before, let me tell you again, I'm not francophone. <laughs> uh, this is the 21st anniversary of Sudbury Pride events. Um, so what things can we look forward to seeing in the next 20 years? Uh, I'm actually really excited. Uh and I, and I can't speak for past years, for, for teams for past years, but I call our, our, our group, our committee, a team because we really work well together as a team and there's some really great ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing or the one belief we all have in common is that Pride is not just to be celebrated one week out of the year. It's, it's a community feel. It's a culture. Uh, it's a lifestyle. And we are looking forward to having events as part of the everyday, whether they be monthly or quarterly or whatever, integrated uh, into uh, into the community uh, curriculum or community schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and that's everything from dance to a speakeasy to whatever, whatever great ideas uh, we come up with or that people bring mm -hmm. to us. Yes, bring us your ideas. <laughs> um, now, do either of you happen to remember maybe the first Pride event that you went to yourselves? It doesn't necessarily have to have been a Sudbury event, but... Uh, mine was in Vancouver, because that's where I'm from. And for me, well, this is one of the reasons I moved from Vancouver, too, is that it was, it was very, very crowded. And it was, it was just a bit too much for me. And it, it became a bit more of a drug party than a Pride thing. And I didn't, when I was here last year, I didn't see any of that. It seemed more, like, family-friendly. And I liked the small community feel. And it felt like, you know, like, you see people that you know. And I don't know. It's just such a different feel in Sudbury than in a big city. I felt safe in Sudbury, whereas in Vancouver, I was like, I don't know who who's here to support and who's here to start a fight. Yeah, you know? who's here to party and who's here for the, yeah, the real reason they exactly. should be there. <laughs> so, yeah, I 100% prefer Sudbury Prides. <laughs> 
What about you, Michelle? Do you have any memories of Prides? Uh, I do. Uh, they're not that far back, however. But interestingly, the first Pride celebration I went to was not for my own self. It was for a good friend of mine. Uh, and I really loved the, um, I, I'll say like has the small town feeling, but I really loved everybody was hugging each other and happy pride. It was just so beautiful. Um, to see, you know, someone walk out from La Fromagerie, say a little kid and with a sign saying, we love you. Yeah. And, you know, uh, another, a, a whole family walking hand in hand. Uh, and by family, I mean like not what we consider your stereotypical, you know, the family walking hand in hand and just so thrilled and loving because that's their description of family and we are appreciating loving that. Um, it was really a great thing for me to experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know about you, but like when I see like a same sex couple walking down the street holding hands, I'm like, yeah, I you go. Like, yeah. yeah. You guys are having the greatest day. <laughs> there was a, a young couple recently who uh, were stopped. Uh, they wanted to take a picture. And people were walking by not helping them. And you know what? Specifically because they were a lovely same-sex couple. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you with this. Yeah. I'm so thrilled. It was just so. I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> those, those little, those little moments like that that really kind of prove that it is a community, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so several of the Pride Week events are geared towards family, inclusive to families, or are geared towards young people. There's yeah. a there's a youth there's a Pride Prom happening one of the mm -hmm. nights at STC. Um, so what are you hoping that youth will kind of take from seeing all these events and participating in Pride? Well, we want to get them involved, right? Like right now, I think. I mean, there there are some youth groups. There's Stassi, the Sub Reaction Center for Youth, um, and TG and ourselves, and Chicago McQuay. They all have uh, youth groups. Um, but other than that, there's not there's not a lot uh, from the youth that I've spoken to, and I'm a youth worker, so I've spoken to a few. <laughs> there's not, not a, a lot of like a uh, real community with like a real like queer community for youth like there's no place for them to gather there's only zigs and that's of course 19 and up uh, yeah right? so but zigs does have a youth night that they have it's like an all ages night so that's cool but yeah like just getting them more involved and like more connected to their community so this is a good way for them to meet other kids like them and mm -hmm. like maybe make some friends and and it's also a valuable opportunity for them to get to meet adult people yeah. that, you know, have already been through exactly what they're going through and come up the other side. Totally. Well, I also think it's, um, I work uh, for the Child and Family Center, and there's a wonderful event, the Pride Barbecue, coming up, and it's in partnership with um, Children's Aid Society, uh, Greater Sudbury Police Youth Initiative, uh, SASI's in there. We've got quite a, quite a beautiful partnership. Um, and it's really great for the youth to see that the adults really care. There is a community out there. Um, here's the services. This is what they look like when you need us. If you don't need them, great, awesome, but we're here anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, we've, we've mentioned before in the interview that um, the, the issues that arise over Pride for the community, they don't just disappear at once Pride Week's done. Those continue on year-round. Um, so what are some resources or some advice that you would give to local youth that are maybe needing some support? Um, well, advice is there's lots of people out there who want to support you. If it's not your immediate family, there are lots of other adults who, who want to be there for you and other people your age who want to be there for you. And some of the resources for all ages, um, and actually if you go on our website, we have a tab called Rainbow Resources and it lists everything. Um, but TG and Ourselves is a fantastic resource for any gender nonconforming person. Um, the Chicago McQuay Health Center, has great resources, Laurentian Pride, obviously, Sassy, as I mentioned, um, and NISA, the Northern Initiative for Social, Social Action. Action. Yeah, they have some things there as well. There's lots, and there's lots of different helplines you can call if you're not comfortable, uh, you know, outing yourself to another person who will know who you are. You can call, you can call a helpline. There's even text helplines for people who don't want to call. So there's, there's lots of options out here in Sudbury. It's actually really exciting. You know, and if all fails, you know, reach, to someone, reach out to an adult that you trust, right? Yeah. Like, reach out to somebody. Email that you... us. <laughs> Absolutely. Sudburypride at gmail.com. We will yeah, talk to you. Yeah, you guys will talk to them, set them up, point them in the right direction, Definitely. whatever they need, right? Mm -hmm. 
So maybe there's people out there listening right now that are wondering how they can help as the as Fierte Sudbury Pride grows, um, either this coming up uh, in a few weeks for the actual Pride Week event, but maybe also continuing forward to plan next year's event or mm. to be on the ground floor for some of the new projects that you guys are working on. Absolutely. Um, so there must be lots of openings for volunteers. There is. We are volunteer based. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, we have no paid positions uh, and we love volunteers. Um, and you can reach us via Facebook Messenger on our page, our website, uh, subrepride.com. Uh, email us at subrepride at gmail.com. We welcome volunteers, and there's something for everyone. Don't have to worry that you don't have a specific skill. We all just fit in there, and we welcome you. just the fact that you want to help is enough. Moral um, support, even. Yeah, the moral support <laughs> Everything even. is. Yeah. Now, how did the two of you become involved in the organization? How did I become a, a, it evolved? Involved? Involved? <laughs> well, evolved as a person. Yeah, evolved as a person. <laughs> I just, I don't know, when I came to Sudbury, I just started getting involved with everything queer that I could find. So <laughs> I partnered up with the Queer North Film Festival, and through that I met, probably that's where I met Danielle, who's the other co-chair for Fierte Sudbury Pride. And, yeah, I met Aiden through various things. I met people through that, so I just... I just met people and then just asked. I said, I want to volunteer. And they said they needed extra help with uh, communications. And I was like, I can do that. And that's, that's something I could do. Yeah, totally. Um, I've always given back in one way or another, different different organizations. And I was on the uh, board for Ms. Samir's. And I met Aiden. So it's funny that you uh, brought Aiden's name up. I met Aiden. And just through, you know, connections with Aiden, I, I met the, the people who were working with Pride. And um, I just was really taken by the whole, the small group was doing such big work and I loved it. And I was able to fit in right away and I was able to contribute in a way that meant something to me. And I just kept going and ta-da, I'm the co-chair. Just <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm one of the people in charge. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming to talk to us today. So can you give us one more time, um, where can we find more information about Fierte Sudbury Pride and when are the dates for Pride Week? So Pride Week is July 9th to 15th, and you can find more information on the website, sudburypride.com, on Facebook, Fierte Sudbury Pride, or uh, emailing, at, at, emailing us at <laughs> sudburypride at gmail.com. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, welcome back to CKLU 96.7. Uh, so this hour we have been talking with the folks from Fierte Pride, or Fierte Sudbury Pride. So we had uh, Michelle and Hez with us to, this week. Um, so we got all the details on what you can expect for Pride Week. So that is coming up July 9th to the 15th. Um, so there's lots of fun stuff going on. There's going to be lots of family activities, uh, lots of youth activities as well, which is really important. So uh, really excited to check some of those events out for sure. Um, so we're going to go into a special kind of playlist here. So we're going to playlist of three female artists from Canada who are queer identifying. So the first one is going to be Kyo de Piret, um, Premonition. Then we'll have Girlfriend by Ria May. And After All by Charlotte Day Wilson. Um, Charlotte Day Wilson, you'll actually be able to catch in Sudbury very soon for Up Here Festival. Uh, they're going to be, She's going to be performing uh, at The Grand on Sunday, August August 19th, so just about to close up the whole festival. Um, it's going to be a great show for sure. So definitely check that out. Um, up here is going to be going on the whole weekend, so we, they've got we've got that to look forward to as well. So that's coming up from the 17th to the 19th. There's going to be lots of fun things to check out over that weekend. Uh, lots of new murals being installed, lots of wild and wacky surprises. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for what they're up to. Um, you can get your tickets right now. Right now, if you wanted to get a full passport, I believe they're $90 uh, to grab for a full weekend of all that entertainment. So uh, definitely worth the price, I'd say. Uh, so let's head into our playlist here. So again, that's Premonition by Code de Pirat, uh, Girlfriend by Ria May, and After All by Charlotte D. Wilson. 
Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. All right, welcome back to CKLU. This is uh, closing out an hour of Creator Conversations. So this week we have been talking with the folks from Fierte Pr- Sudbury Pride, getting all the details on Pride Week coming up uh, July 9th through the 15th. So definitely check them out on Facebook to sub- see all their different events uh, as well. You can look them up on their website. So if you happen to be looking for any resources, uh, you can also check out there. They have lots of great resources you can access year-round um, as well as information about how you can get involved yourself in the organization uh so uh we're just about to sign off here so uh listen in because we're going to have six degrees on very shortly here and uh in the meantime have a very safe and happy long weekend